this is what happens. We talk about other conferences. Now we're talking about PubCon. We are in Vegas for PubCon. <laughs> Yes, everyone, that is right. Vegas for PubCon, and I am sitting here with Kristen Nair, and she is the CEO of Bootcamp Digital. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I am great. We're, we're kind of cheating because we're sitting here off camera talking about conferences and the fact that, well, we see each other once a year or twice at conferences. And just last year, you were telling me about this book that you were coming out with. And now we have it here, the Social Media Field Guide. So what can people find or expect in this book? Yeah, so um, I wrote the book, there's a lot of social media books out there, as you probably know, but many of them are pretty topical and specific. Yeah. And so I've been doing social media training for about three or four years now, and what I find most people are looking for is two different things. One is a way to build a plan and really approach social media a little more strategically. Right. Most of the Strategically? Time. Oh my goodness, that, there, there's that word, that magic word. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Most businesses, it's like, oh, I should be on Facebook, and they go and make a page. They're not sure who they're talking to or what they're trying to achieve. So the first part of my book addresses that, and there's an eight-step planning process to help build an actual strategic plan for social media. The second part of the book deals with the second problem I see businesses make in social media, which again is this like blind focus on a handful of sites, instead of looking holistically at all of the opportunities that social media might bring them. So in the second half, it's what I actually call the field guide part of it, where we sort of look at the entire social media landscape and review probably you know 20 different tools, but they're set up in buckets. So that you can think about publishing, sharing, social networks, co-creation, discussion and review sites. So that way you're thinking holistically about all of the opportunities instead of just saying, oh, let's get on Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, because it seems like when people talk social media, they're still saying Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, maybe LinkedIn, right? maybe Google+. Absolutely. Speaking of, what are your thoughts on Google Plus? Have you had a chance to play with it yet? Yeah, I've been on Google Plus. I think, you know, there's no question uh, that the functionality is better than Facebook, especially with the new updates to Facebook. I think, yeah. you know, their news feed has gotten so awful. Oh, I can't stand it. I just, you know, I want to be able to organize things the way I want to, not the way they force on me. Well, and, and to me, at least in my personal use of Facebook, the new uh, top news algorithms are not as good as the old ones. Yeah. And and they don't update when you refresh, or there's maybe one news site. So I think the functionality in Google Plus is a lot better. The problem, though, is whether or not people are really going to transition over to a new site. Because it's a lot of work. It's fatigue. Every time a new site comes out, I'm just like, oh, man, another site I have to populate. Yeah, and so I think Google Plus is really robust. And the functionality is better, and you can see Facebook starting to borrow from that in a lot of the new updates. But the real question is going to be, will average human beings go and start using a new site? Not like the tech geeks like us who have all checked it out. Um, but it was the fastest growing social network ever, 30 million users in the first month, which is amazing. I think it took Facebook years to get that many. So That's, that's really telling. Maybe, maybe that's a good sign for Google+. Maybe, I think the question is, are people going to stick with it and use it? Because for me, if I go to Google+, there's this small sub-segment of my friends who are there, and they're all the social media people, right? So maybe 100 of my friends are there, so then I'm leaving you know, 1,000 people out of the loop if I only go there, right. then do you want to maintain two? So I think it'll remain to be seen whether or not Google+, can, Google Plus can help average people make that jump. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing, though, that I think is really interesting about Google+, Plus is um, as they start to launch more of their business features. Mm -hmm. Because when they came out, they said, we don't want businesses to make pages. Hang on, we'll get something for you. Yeah. And what was interesting about that is that um, it did, you know, businesses were so excited, but they were told to wait. And I think once Google Plus launches their business pages, businesses are going to jump all over that oh, yeah. because they believe it'll impact search rankings. Whether it does or doesn't, I mean, probably some of it will, right? Because yeah. if people are sharing content, it probably should rank higher. If they're talking about it on Google+, Plus, it right. probably should. So it makes sense that some of it will interchange with search rankings. Mm -hmm. But I think once there's a relationship that's clear there, you'll start to see businesses going right. over like gangbusters. And then the question is, will people follow that? Yeah. You and I um, talk a lot about specifics within social media also, and given the book and whatnot, are there certain, 
are there certain aspects of social media, certain topics within social media, strategies or whatnot, that you feel aren't getting enough attention or that people just aren't diving into enough? I think one of the big opportunities in social media that still exists is um, a good content syndication strategy. So I did a session yesterday on um, search and social and the relationships there. And my background is social media, not search. But what I've seen over the years is that a content strategy that touches multiple different social networks can do wonders for your search engine optimization. Because what it does is it helps you dominate first page results on a term and pushes everyone else off. Right. So let me share a couple examples with you. She's um, so good at these <laughs> tangible examples, I love it. Um, okay, so the first example I'll give you is slideshare.net or .com now. I created a SlideShare account in 2009 when it came out, and I just uploaded presentations I was using anyways. It took probably a grand total of two hours to upload 11 presentations that year. That year they got 10,000 views. Right, that probably was more traffic than my website got that year. I mean, so 10,000 views, which is you know building exposure for my brand, but here's the real benefit to it is that if you do a search for something like social media, social media plan, do a search for social media plan, the top two results are from SlideShare. Oh, wow. Amazing. And so my personal experience, so I do uh, professional speaking, and I had created a presentation on like how real estate agents can use social media probably three years ago or something, and I had posted it on SlideShare. I got two paid speaking gigs from people who searched for social media for real estate agents, saw my presentation first, and then looped back to my website yeah. to inquire about having me deliver that presentation for them. So it, you know, it's really powerful in driving results, not just, um, not just getting people to look at your content. Right. But you can see, especially through search, it linking back to tangible opportunities for you. Um, and then I, I think the second opportunity that most people still aren't taking really good advantage of is video. <laughs> Absolutely, we could not agree with you more on TechZulu. Yeah, I mean, there are so many studies that show the impact of video on your website. It's not just about you know producing videos for uh, you know for YouTube per se and trying to do something funny, but there are so many studies that show conversion rates go up when you have a video on your homepage. There are studies that show that people are more likely to buy something from you when you have a video showing and explaining the product. Yet you're not seeing very many people take advantage of this. It's the human touch, I think. It's the human factor of it. The images, yeah. the voice, the personal touch. Absolutely, well, and that's why uh, television advertising is the most popular form, right? Because you can communicate so many things through video that you could never communicate in words or on radio or any other medium. Helpful tips from Krista, and you will find more of them in her book. There you go, right there, folks. And where can people get a copy? Yeah, it's on Amazon. If you just search social media field guide on Amazon, that's the best way to find it. And then if you know her like I do, you can get a signed copy. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krista. Hopefully I'll get to see you again before, I don't know, next year at PubCon. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. And we'll be back again soon.